Electromechanical components are on the move, both literally and as a collective technical field and industry. Just like other fast evolving technologies, mechanical motion devices and the related control solutions are becoming more varied and finding their way into applications they wouldn't have been suited for just a couple of years ago. We recently polled control the science readers to get a look at the types of electromechanical technologies now being used in their machines and applications. These include motion and positioning components, linear motion axes, gear motors and reducers, and other components. We also asked what they're using these devices for and how satisfied they are with their electromechanical solutions. You'll also hear from Chris Lovendahl, sales manager for Concept Machine in Northbrook, Illinois. I spoke with Chris earlier and we'll hear his interpretation for the findings right after this short break. Well, let's get started. For linear motion and positioning, 92% of the respondents specify cylinders either always or sometimes. 83% use ball screw or lead screw driven slides. 81% specify belts and chains or pulleys and gears. 74% order direct linear motors and 64% specify belt driven rodless slides. The results of our 2008 survey showed similar variety but this time we notice an increase in the use of direct linear motors and a little less for mechanical devices. So I asked Chris about linear motors choices these days. Chris, um, are we finally seeing an emergence of linear motors applications after many years of very slow growth? I think we are. The fact that the technology has gotten easier to use and it's become lower costs uh, has made it a better solution for a lot of our applications. What applications lend themselves to a linear motor solution now? Uh, usually we're looking for something where there's a high speed need. There also needs to be programmable motions needed. That's probably the best application for it today. Okay. What about those um, mechanical choices? Your machine employ both nomadic actuators and some of the other devices we're talking about. Can you briefly summarize what drives your choices? Uh, certainly. Um, well, we're looking for something that's high speed, that has multiple position points. You're looking at something like a linear motor drive or a servo drive. Um, if we're looking for a slower motion, uh, something that's much more economical would be pneumatics. Obviously, there's also some hybrids in between there, but those are pretty much the two differentiations you would have. Okay. The survey tells us that to power their motion, 71% of the respondents report using electricity as their primary source, and 28% use it as a secondary source. Meanwhile, 23% use pneumatics for primary power, but a full 62% use it as a secondary source and 21% use hydraulics as a primary power source, while 47% use it as a secondary source. These results show a noticeable decrease in hydraulics and pneumatics since the 2008 survey. I asked Chris if it's simply expected now to use electrical power wherever possible. Other than for those big applications um, where the power of hydraulics still matters, is it fair to say that electric can beat pretty much anything now for operating cost? Uh, pretty much. Um, as I say, you're going to look for multiple position needs. Pneumatics are still the lowest cost solution, but they're much simpler uh, and much less accurate, unfortunately. Does the machine user's facility dictate your choice of power um, sometimes? Um, not so much their facility. It, it can come into play, but it's more the experience within the plant or the personnel. If they're used to using a certain type of technology, uh, we'll typically want to stay with that technology to make the machine integration more user-friendly. Okay. Next, we ask the participants to rank the importance of several factors in their linear motion choices. 98% say speed is important or very important. 96% say that about positioning, accuracy, and reliability. And 95% add that simplicity is important or very important. Likewise, 94% say that acceleration and deceleration and or vendor support are important or very important. It's really no surprise that these all are pretty important factors, but position feedback was the most important consideration compared to the others. Back 
clash control and torque control, while important, were at the bottom of these choices. Chris had some thoughts about these results. Does position control make sense to you as the number one factor? I think it does because if we don't have accuracy, uh, we won't be able to use the device at all. Any surprise there that torque control wasn't higher on the list? Uh, torque control for us as a systems integrator is, is primarily important to us when we're doing torque driving or rotational tests. When we're doing linear, mo linear motions, uh, it's not quite as important. The survey also asked participants if they use gear motors or gear reducers, and 88% say they do, while 12% say they do not. Of those that do use gear motors or reducer, just over 50% use integrated gear motors, while just under another 50% use standalone gear reducers with regular motors. With such a split on the integrated assembly question, I asked Chris about making that choice. What's your view on integrated gear motors versus separate motors and gearboxes? As a system integrator, we typically want to one-stop shop. We want to go to one supplier who can give us both the gear motor and the drive because it's a better solution. Typically, we get better service, and it tends to be a little bit more compact of a package. Finally, are there industry rules of thumbs for deciding at what speed and torque levels that the gear reduction is required instead of, for example, just a server servo solution? Uh, typically, when we're looking to just power a drive at a certain speed, at a certain rate, uh, not necessarily for a positional accuracy, we'll use a gear motor. Once again, as I said earlier, when we need positional accuracy and multiple points of position, then we go to servos or linear motors. Okay. Chris, um, thank you for adding some content to our survey results. We really appreciate you sharing your knowledge and insights with other control engineers in this market intelligence report. Thank you for watching.